So in this video, the auditor is auditing the effectiveness of the organization's tooling management process. Watch this video and see whether the auditor does this effectively. So I want to now move on to the auditing uh, the tooling management process. Can you explain your role in this process? Yeah, so I'm the tooling manager. I'm in charge of this area for this facility. Okay, um, and we did see the performance indicator you showed me earlier about the availability of the tools, uh, and I see that you're meeting that target. So now what I want to do is to actually look at the physical management of the tools. Can we look at this tool first? Yeah, um, absolutely. Can you talk about the ownership of the tool? How is that made apparent? Uh, yeah, so if you see right here, we have this tag that clearly states the ownership um, and then uh, some other information down here. Right, and I'm making reference in this audit specifically to uh, ITF Clause 8516. Okay. And we're talking here about tool identification right. and asset number. Yeah, yeah. So, so do you mark the asset number we, on the tool? We mark the part number, so you, you can see here that that's the part number that this tool produces. And that's fine, but ITF requires also that you have an asset number. I, uh, I can't I, see I an guess, asset number anywhere. Yeah, on we, here. we don't use asset number. I guess I wasn't aware of that, that yeah, part of so the requirement. Yeah, so we have this requirement under G about uh, the asset number. But if the customer says this is okay, can we continue to use it or do we have No, that? no, the customer can't take away ITF requirements. They can interpret or add. Okay. Uh, but they cannot take away the requirement. So the fact we've got the requirement for an asset number, then that is a requirement. So I will be making a note of that. Now, you told me in the introduction earlier that you keep production tools and service tools. Correct. Can you show me an example of a service tool? Uh, yeah, so this one's a serv It's a really low running service. Um, we haven't used it in about two so, years and we use it uh, Basically, I think it's every uh, two and a half years-ish that we run this. So this is 2593 part number. Correct. Is that for an automotive customer? It is. This one. Right. Just visually, I see that there's a lot of deterioration on these hoses. Yeah, like I said, it's um, really old and low runners. Right, but it is a customer-owned tool. It is. And I saw earlier for this part number that you do have a service contract. I we know do. Yep. Right, but when, when you next need to manufacture parts then, how are we going to do it using a tool that is in this condition? Uh, I mean, it should still work. Uh, yeah, there's a little deter it's, It doesn't look too bad. Right, but have you informed the customer of the deterioration or the damage of this tool? No. Because this is customer owned again. Uh, correct, it is. But I, I don't think this is uh, a big enough issue to warn the customer notify the customer of. Right, okay, again, we're gonna follow up on that and maybe what I'll do is take a sample of a few more tools. Okay. But ITF does require management, not just for production tooling, but any tooling that is also used for service part manufacture. So let's summarize. The good thing is that once the auditor had looked at the effectiveness of the tooling management process by reviewing the key performance indicators within the office, they have now followed the audit trails down to the physical management of the tooling. The auditor made a fundamental mistake by trying to impose requirements that are not within the standard. In 7.5.1.6, it requires clear identification of the tooling, particularly related to customer ownership, but it does not specifically require that each tool has a specific asset number marked on the tool. In the ITF, that is only a such as, not a shall requirement. The other thing that this video did is open up the discussion that IETF 16949 relates to production tooling, but also any tooling that is used for service parts. And obviously, the organization tooling management system needs to cover both the production tools and also the service-related tooling. And in this video, the auditor had identified a problem about the condition of some of the service tools, which is a good audit trail to follow. 
because if they have an order for those service parts, they need to make sure that they can meet the relevant delivery requirement and that the tool is in good condition. So let's summarize with the key learning points. The first one is that when we audit processes such as tooling management, we don't do them sat in the office, but we go down into the physical work environment. The second learning point is auditors should not impose their own requirements or use wherein the standard it uses terms such as such as. They are not shell requirement. And the final learning point is that when we're auditing, we're not just looking at the management of how the organization makes production parts, we're also looking at how they plan and undertake manufacture of any relevant service parts.